engage with a therapist, and if it's successful, they won't press charges. What odds would you give, murder or accidental? Well, if the push came to the shove. One staircase, possible four, but two staircases, odds on she had help. Are you the one they want to question? No, it's not me they want to question. I wasn't anywhere near there. If it was me riding past their friggin' house, I would have said so. So she was pushed? Yeah, but who the hell was up there? I'm still not satisfied with their statements. I told you to focus on the family itself. I mean, especially with these new blood samples found in the victim's bedroom. Yes. I talked to Adora Hills, who works for Mr Harrogate, and she said that he was at the office for about an hour on the night of the murder, but left just after 10.30. OK, well, do we have anything on anyone employed or with access to the Harrogate well, house? We've interviewed four people who've done work on the house or the garden, plus the cleaner. She's been with them for 18 months, and we've another couple who come in on Saturdays to do the garden. Mike, this is unexpected. Yeah, need a word with Sanch. Fine, right, that's it. Wrap it up. What's going on? This pair My now. office. Oh, right. Yeah, look, I need a place to stay with Richard. I've only got one room. Any chance we can move in with you for a while? Not with the wife and the baby. Oh, shit, I'm sorry, I forgot, yeah. Happy families, long may it last. Yeah. Two of them. He didn't try to back off it, he admitted it. She's the image of me. I've never met Walker's kids. How old is he? Fifteen. Now, you know. And his sister Amy's eighteen. And she seems to be the golden girl, if you know what I mean. Mm. Mike. Good night, Lisa. <clears throat> what she just told you? Hmm? Oh, it must be a nightmare for you. Yeah, it is. And to be honest, I can't quite believe it's happened, but it has. And I've got to do anything I can to sort them out. You know, I'm dealing with this really dysfunctional family. One of them might be a killer. Oh. Thanks a bunch for that. OK, we were dysfunctional. I hold my hand up, but it was not my fault. Jesus. Look, you, uh... Want me to look through your statements? Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Do you want a cup of tea? Pint of whiskey. I don't think they do that in the canteen. They come in to see me tomorrow. They haven't found that bloke on the bank. What? Well, as they didn't ring me, I rang them. <clears throat> and I asked them, have they traced that, whoever it was, on the bike? So they said they're interviewing me in the morning. You called who? It was in the papers, on the news. So I rang them, the police. You bloody called them? Yes, I did. <laughs> Michael, I work for the Harrogates. I cleaned for them for almost two years. And I know them. You know nothing, you stupid bitch. You called the police to say what? What I just said. Why? Why would you do something like that? I knew them. You cleaned their house, Mum. You didn't know them. This is your stupid little pathetic need to feel important. You are in crazy. If you must know, the real reason I called them was to find out if somebody had come forward. It was you, wasn't it? No! No, I said to you before, do you listen to me? If it was me, I would have said it was me, but it wasn't me, Mum. You understand? It was not me. And now you've got to make it look like you know something. No, I haven't. You have! And don't shout at me. You know, sometimes you sound just like your father. Yeah? Well, no wonder he left you. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave you. Well, you wouldn't go to him, would you? Say you wouldn't. He's my father! Yeah, and he walked out on me. On you. He never paid a penny for you. He never even sent you a few quid for Christmas or your birthday. I'm still going to go stay with him if you don't drop this crap about the Arrogates. You're all I've got, Michael. Don't. Please don't leave me. I don't want you to leave me. You better keep your yapping little mouth shut about me knowing Emily, about my bike and about anything that connects me with that bloody family! Was it a burglary? Oh, no. Didn't look like it. 
I mean, there were some, um, some CDs missing, according to the mother. You don't shove someone down the stairs for that, do you? Weird kind of music. Indie bands and Mozart. Just had an interesting call from Mrs. Summerby. Said she was expecting to be questioned. Used to be the cleaner for the Harrogates. And she called in? No, she wanted to know if our cyclist had been traced. Mm. And she's the cleaner. Did she have a key to the Harrogate house? Did. Gave it back when she left. I'll fix the meeting for her tomorrow. Okay. You say goodnight to Mike, yeah? Yeah. He, um, he wanted to move into my place with his kid. I mean, I'd say no. She'd have done her nut. He told you about it. Not Lisa. I've skim read most of the statements. If you don't get our results soon, it's going to go cold on you. Really? Yeah. What's your take on the family? Well, I think the eldest boy was involved. Okay. What's his motive? Um. Well, I, I don't have a motive at the moment, Mike. Um. He. He has a stepsister who was more academic than he was, uh, more athletic than he was, you know, can cause tension. Oh, dear God, you could be talking about my own bloody son. Why would he do such a horrible, terrible thing? Defenceless creature. Swans. No, Mike, we haven't always seen I'd, uh, uh, This is a... It's a tough situation for you, so if you need room or, or a space to work things out with Richard, you can have my apartment. You'd do that for me? Sure, yeah. Just uh, let me know when you want to move in and I'll move out. Uh, I'll give you the space that you need. Thank you. Uh, can I buy you a drink? Another one? I have another half a lemonade, thanks. No, thanks. So I'm going to get out of here. You said you see the couple over there by the car? That's John Harrogate, our victim's father. Oh, that is definitely not his wife. I'll get breakfast at the office. Deirdre, did you hear what I just said? Yes. You know I don't think you should go into the office. We have to plan the funeral. Look, we discussed all this last night. I said, I'll contact the church and arrange everything. I can do it from work. If you hadn't gone to the office, none of this would have happened. We'd have been home when Emily got back. But no, you couldn't get through one family dinner without running off to see that woman. You think I don't know, John, but I know. I didn't run off to see her. I told you exactly where I would be, and that is where I was. With her? What happened? Did James find you with her? Is that what happened? James did not come to the office, and I was working. Stop it. Just stop lying. Do you really think I don't know what's been going on between you and that woman? Deirdre, I'm going to work, and I don't want to get into this, and I don't want the whole neighborhood to hear. Yes, well, God! anybody should find out that you are not the doting husband and father but having an affair with a woman who has been after you since day one and can you blame me do you have any idea what it's like living with you you and your constant obsessions you make me have them emily knew about you and i did everything i could so the children wouldn't find out oh 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 right so so that's why you sent james after me was it what did you hope he would find me screwing her over a desk i was working Making enough so I could walk away and leave you. Oh, Christ. Oh, you're such a bitch. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll talk to them. You just stay here and do your usual cleaning and washing. But you can't make this better. Nothing can. Oh, 
coffee? Uh, no, thank you. You, um, you called the station last night? Yes, that's correct. It's because I work for the Harrigas for quite some time. You had a key to their house, yes? Uh, yes. But she asked for it back when I left. She wasn't an easy person to work for. Very meticulous. God forbid if there was a dish or a cup not replaced in the exact position on the shelf. I am only really cleaning between my proper profession. And that is? I'm an actress. Well, a supporting artist. You get to a certain age in my profession and work dries up. It's all reality and game shows now with non-professionals. You remained in touch with the Harrogers since you left? No, I have not. Well, we live in a council estate and theirs is a private estate. Sorry, we? My son, Michael. How old is he? Nineteen. But he's not here now, he's at work. He's a trainee electrician. And Mr. Summerby? I'm divorced. He lives in Scarborough. He's a travelling salesman. And the further he travels, the better. Is your son on a bicycle? Um, well, he used to, but he drives a van now. Did he know Emily Harrigan? No, not really. Uh, well, he picked me up once, I think, from their house, but he didn't know them. Why did you want to know if the cyclist had come forward? Pardon? When you called the station, you wanted to know if the cyclist we'd asked to come forward had been traced. Oh, yes. Why was that of such interest to you? Um, well, I hoped that it would mean that you'd made an arrest. Uh, there was a, a witness, wasn't there, who saw whoever it was riding past the Harrogates? Yes. Yes, I was. It was, I'm sure, about 9.30 when Mr. Harrogate came to the office. Do you usually work so late? Not at all, but we had a very big order in. It needed a lot of extra paperwork as it was an overseas sale. It says here that Mr. Harrogate left at 10.15. Well, I wasn't timekeeping, but I'm sure he stayed over half an hour at the very least. How long have you worked for his company? Three years. Do you know the family? No, I've never actually met the children. His wife once or twice. Do you socialise with John Harrogat outside the office? No, I don't. At any point when you were with John Harrogat on that night, did his son James appear? No. We finished the paperwork that was needed for me to send off the following morning, and then John... Mr Harrogat left. I think he was having dinner with his family. You know, I have actually said all this to someone who came to the office. I'm unsure why you wanted to see me again personally. Thank you very much for your time. It is a very tragic situation, and I'm sorry I cannot be of more help. Show Mrs. Hills out. DCS Walker's here. Yeah, what did she have to say for herself? Well, she's claiming she's just John Harrogate's business partner, but they're definitely a hot item. She's lying through her teeth. Yeah, uh, look, I know you want to focus on the family, but uh, if I were you, I'd cast a net wider Oshie and you're wasting valuable time. Am I? Yeah. Uh, Lisa's now freed up to work with Satch. They uh, caught up with each other this morning. Look, I'm going to have got, I've got to take some leave. Fine. Um, I've just been to see the wife. Um, it's imperative I get Richard out of there. She's hysterical. He's locked himself up in his bedroom and won't talk to anybody. So, look, that offer of using your place. CCTV uh, footage. You want to see two because sections? Because mine is just a bed set up. Do you want to come see this, Mike? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm at work. You know, I've got pampers on the list. Pull-ups. Would you write that down? Okay, okay I'll remember. Yeah. I've got to go. Yeah. yeah, don't touch that, Lisa. We need a warrant to open that up. Sorry, I I'm Detective Sergeant West, and this is Detective Sergeant Satchel. We were talking to, I think it was your mother. Are you Michael? Yeah. Your bike in there, is it? I don't have one. Take a look. 
I was just on my way to work, so... Your mother said you knew Emily Harrigan? I didn't know her. I met her once or twice when I picked up my mum, but I didn't really know her. Sure it's all right for us to take a look around? Help yourself, mate, but I've got to go to work, so if you don't mind pulling door two when you're done. Ferdinand, gorillas. Mozart, clarinet, quintet. Run it again. And again. I'm not even sure it's a he. Trace the bike, will you? At least we can see that. Hello? Oh, you're... Okay. Satch. Yep. OK, well done. Talk to the neighbours, see what else you can get. Bye. Mike, can this wait? OK, everyone, we have a suspect that's not connected to the family. Name's Michael Summerby, son of a woman who used to clean for the Harrogates. I'll arrange a warrant to search her house. I want him brought in on suspicion of murder. Well, I'll tell you what, you're never going to see me again. I'm going. But I never told them anything. I just wanted to find out for myself. Find out what? That it wasn't you on the bike. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was not me. Get up. Get up and listen to me. You have twisted all this. You've done this. But why didn't you tell me the truth? And why did you lie to me? I wouldn't have got you into trouble. You know I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Then get me out of it. He was walking his dog on Wimbledon Common and found these half buried there. He's an ex-police officer. He thought it was suspicious as the clothes are in good condition, but for the bloodstains. Oh, look, they could belong to anyone. This was in the pocket. It's torn part of a purchase order for electrical goods, new plugs and wiring. It's the company Michael Summerby works for. Mrs Summerby? West, stay in the house. You two out front, please. Mr. Summerby, where's your son? I don't know. I don't know. Is this where you found the CDs? Yeah. I'm not arresting you. Because you haven't noticed I'm trying to bond with you. I'm trying to dress to please you. I get bloody criticism. Dr. Simmons, we're seeing you now. 
But can Richard wait here a moment? Ah, uh, yes, you'll be all right. Yeah. Up the stairs, along the corridor, and on the right. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about your divorce, if it was a mutual decision? It wasn't. I left my wife. I didn't leave her for anyone. I, I did get into a relationship shortly after, but it's not the reason I left. Are you still in that relationship? Uh, no, no, I live alone. My wife still lives in the family home. I provide for them all. Uh, well, I, I thought it was important uh, that the kids were disturbed as little as possible by the divorce. Your daughter's older than Richard? Uh, yeah, three years. Uh, she's very talented, very, very bright. Do your children have any pets? Pets? No, no. My wife, Lynn, doesn't like animals in the house. I th yeah, I think, we'd, I think we had a puppy for a short time. But it was, uh, I don't think it was house trained, so she packed her off to uh, the Battersea Dogs Home. How did Richard react to that? I don't know, I wasn't there. Uh, but it was, his, it was his puppy, he got it for his birthday. Did you give the puppy to him? Uh, no, it was my brother, I think. Look, is this really relevant? I just, I don't like leaving him sitting downstairs on his own. Of course, I just need a little more background from you first. Is there any prior history of Richard acting in this way? No, no, no. How would you describe your relationship with your ex-wife in the run-up to your divorce? Look, I think I know where you're going with this, but I have never been abusive physically to my wife. <laughs> I wanted to strangle the life out of her. <laughs> God, she's hell to live with. Would your ex-wife agree to coming in to see me? Uh, I wanted her to, but she refused. I suppose because she decided I was the one to blame then. No. No. Has your ex-wife ever been in an abusive relationship that Richard may have been privy to? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, but it was a few years ago. Whether she's with someone now, uh, I, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Well, can you tell me more about that time? It's important that I know as much as possible about Richard's past. I've now moved in to take care of my daughter and the boys. She's very depressed. She has continual migraines. Ah, yes, the family liaison officer keeps me updated. Perhaps Mr. Harrogate's at home. No, he isn't and he won't be. He moved out last week, right after the funeral. Darling. Are you up to seeing Detective Chief Inspector Connor? And, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, dear Satchel. Satchel. OK. OK. Uh, Mrs. Harrogate, I thought you should know. Michael Summerby has been charged with Emily's murder. He hasn't been granted bail, and he'll be kept in Wallington prison until his trial. When will that be? Five or six months. But we're very confident that we have everything that Whatever happens, it won't bring Emily back. Mother, call James. I want to tell the boys. James? James! They're not back at school yet. I suppose you know my husband left me. Hard to believe he could at such a terrible time. I'm so sorry. James must have gone out. I feel sorry for those two lads. You can almost feel that depression choking you, can't you? Well, she hasn't got much to be happy about right now, has she? And the husband didn't let the grass grow under his feet. Oh, look at the garage. I reckon he would have left her anyway, well before the daughter died. He just probably didn't have the guts before. You call it guts. It's bloody selfish. I mean, those boys need him, and he's off shagging his mistress. But like she said, it's over, isn't it? Well, not quite. Michael Summerby hasn't been found guilty. <laughs> what, what we've got against him, do me a favour. We don't have a motive, the weapon, and he hasn't admitted to murder. I'm 
I'm so sorry, I've forgotten. Emily shared my locker at the tennis club. There's a tennis sneakers and a sweater. Have you opened it? No, it's locked. My mother said I should bring it in. I put Emily's other things in the bag too. I'm, I'm sorry, I've not played tennis for ages. Why don't you take a diary to a tennis game? Away from prying eyes? Yeah, but whose? session 10 o'clock tomorrow. Don't go near the bed. You don't need to go to the bed. It's not going to happen again. He's there. He's in it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just do it. Stay by. Stay by. No, it's okay. No. Nope. Sorry. Stan. It's okay. OK, have a look at the last entry. Michael Summerby has been lying through his teeth. I had a long talk with Dad and we were discussing universities and he said I should try for Oxford. This started me really thinking about Michael. I've yeah, got... I'm going to tell him tonight that I don't want to see him anymore. Explain that I have to be honest, my future is more important. Well, she told him. There's your motive. All neatly written out. OK, I want to use it as evidence. Get a photocopy to ASAP. Sad, isn't it? Writing about a future and she didn't have one. That was the lab with a result. The DNA profile from the blood on Michael Summerby's clothes matches Emily Harrogate's. Where's Satch? He had an appointment. Appointment? How much have you read? I'm going backwards, but she met Michael on a regular basis. I know, we'll disclose it to the defence. Go to March 2005. There's three references to James Harrogate, there it is. Now, it might mean nothing at all, but she refers to a fight that they have in the bedroom about a tennis match. Out! James what? came into my Get bedroom out. and started shouting and yelling that I made him look stupid on the court, but his return of serve was all over the place. He grabbed me and started to shake me, and then he hit me, and my nose bled. I called Mum and she hit the roof because there was blood, blood all over the, the carpet. carpet. James lied and said it was an accident. OK, the mother comes in, she cleans it up. This could be the stain that we found in the bedroom. So on the night she died, she might not have been struck in the bedroom at all. The period during and after your divorce, when your wife was being terrorised by this man, seems to be particularly difficult for him. Because Richard witnessed his violence to her, and more crucially, your subsequent actions... Yeah, OK, 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 OK. I, I shot him. I killed him. I was in self-defence. Yes, but nevertheless, Richard obviously was aware of what had happened. And when your actions were made public, he might well have felt complicit, also guilty, because as you were no longer at home, he would have thought of himself as the man of the house and that he should have done more to protect his mother. It was a kid. He wasn't another man was mentally unstable. Yeah, you know that, but as you say, Richard was just a small boy. One of the options I'm considering is hypnosis. Would you have any problem with that? If I can be present. Of course. But I have to present my report to the youth offending team. What report? What do they expect from you? They'll want to know that Richard is engaging with the therapy, that I do not consider him to be a threat in any way, that he will not inflict any more damage upon innocent creatures or indeed on himself. Are you saying he's suicidal? Is that what you're telling me? Richard. 
has a great deal of inner rage. At present, this anger manifests itself in hurting animals. Swans, dogs, cats. But he said it never happened before. He swore to me it never happened before. When the rage happens, it's not under his control. I hate you. I hate you! Richard, do you remember that puppy? The one my brother gave you for your birthday? Your mother says she got rid of it because it wasn't house trained or she couldn't be bothered to take it out at night. Yeah. That was the truth, wasn't it? That was the reason she took it to the Battersea Dogs Hall. Snapper? Yeah, Snapper. You never harmed Snapper, did you? No. I liked him. But that madman she was with used to kick him. Did you see him kicking the dog? Yeah. It had shit on the carpet. He made it yelp. It went under the table. But you never hurt Snapper in any way, did you? No. <laughs> Friend at school. His dog strangled itself on its own lead, trying to jump over the fence. <laughs> End of it got caught on the fence, so when he jumped over the chain, the loop tightened and it strangled him. It was a boxer dog. His eyes bulged out and his tongue went this funny colour. <laughs> they buried it in his garden. <laughs> Michael. This is Emily's last entry in her diary. She was ending a relationship. 24 hours later, she's found dead. I didn't do it, all right? I went to meet her. She told me it was over. And yeah, OK, I was, I was angry. But she didn't do it in a nasty way. She was really nice about it. We were good friends. But you wanted to fuck her, didn't you? <sighs> yes. Of course I did. You're not understanding what I'm saying to you. She's not like the other girls I used to knock about with. These other girls? Did you have sexual relationships with them? Yes. But not with Emily? No. We just used to talk. Well, I'm expected to believe that. Michael, I've seen her photographs. She was beautiful. I'm telling you the truth. All right, all right. But if you did try it on with her, and she rejected you, how'd that make you feel? Sad. Look, I always knew she was too good for me. Just kind of made me love her more. I didn't need to screw her. These other girls, the ones you just didn't listen to music with, can you give me their names? Why? It's not like they're gonna help me, you know, they're little slags anyway. They just have it in for me, because all I wanted was sex. Michael, the prosecution is gonna have it in for you. I'm defending you, and I find it very hard to believe that when this beautiful girl you've been seeing for months wouldn't give it up for you, you just went off and screwed other girls. And after all that patience and waiting, she then turns around and says it's over? Wasn't she just a big prick to you? It wasn't like that! So tell me what it was really like then. And I don't think his therapy's working. I don't understand him. Don't know why he did what he did. Yeah, well, it's a cry for help, isn't it? Oh, great pamper, oh, Sonny. He's got a... I mean, my son's is in a read. He's got a serious problem, Sergeant. I don't it's know if I can cope. Shit. I mean, what if I can't help him? What if his problem's up here in his head? I haven't got a clue what she weighs. And then won't come and see him. She's washed her hands of him. Oh, shit, there's no signs on there. Therapist claims he's, he's, he's holding a lot of rage inside. Yeah, but he gets that from you, doesn't he? Good. That's a joke. Yeah, but you've got to admit, you've got one hell of a temper on you, haven't you? Now, where's the formula? Hey, 
You may be right, but I'd never tied a wire around a, a swan's neck and tried to throttle it. Now, I'll tell you something else. I had a harder time than my son. When I was a kid, my father used to beat the living daylights out of us. Never did me any harm. What, you never whacked Richard? Nah, maybe I should have. I mean, Amy's no problem. She gets straight A's and she's athletic. What about Richard? Nah, no, can he kick a ball? He's got two left feet. Always something near the bottom, minus C. She not breastfeeding? No. Ugh. Nah, he's just a loser, such. Always has been, always will be. Well, don't give up on him, mate. Don't push him away. You were never there. Never there! And you didn't protect Mom! You didn't do anything! Be back after lunch. Be back after lunch, John. Darling, I'm going off to lunch. OK. See you later. Hello. Didn't hear you come in. She just passed me. By she, I take it you mean Dora. She's having lunch with a client. Do you fancy a sandwich? No. Why aren't you at school? Mum's still in the house. Said she needed a hand. Well, she didn't waste any time. You OK? Must be difficult for you, living at home. Yeah. They were there today. Who? Police. The dummy. Chucking it down the stairs to see if it would hit its head. They called it Emily. Oh, God. Was Mark there? No, he was at school. We weren't allowed to watch it anyway. What if it was an accident? We know it wasn't, James. She had to have been pushed down the cellar stairs by that bastard. But what if she wasn't? James, we know she was. He's about to stand trial for killing her, and I hope he gets sent away for life, the scum. God, I'd like ten minutes with him. Am I glad to go to the trial? You may even be called. I hope not, but... But I want us there, all of us, as a family. But we're not anymore, are we? I don't want to go. Oh, come on. Look, I'll be there with you, Jim. Look, don't you, don't you want to see this Michael Summer be found guilty? But what if he isn't? What is it? Tell me. Come on, you can trust me. Did you go back to the house that night? James, what did you see? What are you doing? For God's sake, James, what do you know? Oh, I get all the way to the restaurant and they call me on my mobile to say they can't make it. You know, John, you're going to have to talk to him. He's very rude to me. I mean, I can understand why, obviously, but he walked straight past when I left and now he's just done it again. John! I need to talk to him. your time. I want you to tell me what's making you angry. I can't sort of get things out. I could be doing something and then all of a sudden 
I get this feeling that... What feeling? Nobody likes me. They pick on me at school because of Dad. And my mum is always shouting at me. And... It's like they can do what they like with me. And that... I don't have any right to do things. And that makes me angry. What happens when you talk to your parents about this feeling? They're not listening. They don't understand. Boys your age don't need the light at night. Grow up, son. I can't get it out of my head. And they don't care. You take deep breaths, Richard. Nice and easy. It's better. What is it you can't get out of your head, Richard? What is it? I'm always frightened. Richard. I want you to look straight at the things that frighten you. Fifteen years old, that's why! Fifteen years old, and it's nice to you still and it's nice to you still and it's nice I can't look. Bad boy. I've got to get away. I've got to get away. Richard, listen to me. There's nothing to be frightened of. And no one's going to be angry with you. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in my back garden. Next door's cat. Just got over the fence. <laughs> What's happening now? I'm tying a can to its tail. <laughs> Go on. I'm kicking it. I'm kicking it. And kicking it. And kicking it. <laughs> Gonna limp and making this meowing sound. <laughs> it's called crumpled and blood's trickling out of its nose. <laughs> Richard, you're going to wake up feeling refreshed and you won't remember anything of our conversation. Where's my dad? Michael, you'll have 12 jurors sitting opposite you in court. That's 24 eyes on you every second of the trial. So you're going to wear a suit and tie. Have you got a suit and tie? You mean one like yours? Don't be cheeky. Right. Let's take it from the top again. You say you didn't go near the cellar. Your print flew there by carrier pigeon. No comment. What about the shoe print and blood on the cellar floor? The overlays show it's a perfect fit for one of your shoes, found in your bedroom, same size, same distinctive tread pattern, same areas of wear and tear, so that places you, or I suppose someone wearing your shoes, down in the cellar. Did you go down into the cellar? No comment. Michael, no comment is not an option for you. You've been watching too much TV. I don't have a clue what your case is or how to defend you unless you tell me. You know what? I've got better things to do with my time than defend someone who does not want to be defended. Look, 
Michael. I might sound like a bastard, but I have to repeat things and ask you over and over again. Come on. Let's work this out together. Because the reality is, I want to win this case. But I need your help. Okay? Are we pals now? Come on. Give me your hand. Let's shake it. If I tell you what happened, you won't believe me. I'm on your side, so try me. Try me. You don't need to repeat it. I just want you to understand. Understand what? What's to understand? You, you don't want to see me anymore. I really care about you, Mikey. Don't, don't be like this. What do you want from me? You keep me hanging around. You keep me waiting. You come and say it's this. The best, Mikey. The best for who? I just tried to go and you stopped me. I just don't want you to go away angry. I know if I keep seeing you, I'll go hurt you more. Lisa said you wanted these, and if you finish with those, then I I'll haven't. Be... If it's not a rude question, the trial kicks off next week, and I'll... oh god, I don't have time for that. Close the door, Satch. Good morning, Lisa. Hi. Give me those. <laughs> yes. Mike, go and have coffee with Satch, please. I'm trying to finish up in here. Why, well, it seems pretty uh, sordid, eye, doesn't it? He's pleading not guilty. So what's your problem? My problem is that he comes from a very dysfunctional family. He's jealous of his sister, and we already know he struck her once. Hey, Just now, a... my son is jealous of his sister, oh, but that doesn't this personal, make... Mike, it's not. Hey, but, but, but I didn't bring it up. You did. You did your job, but it's a bit late to start having doubts, isn't it? Mike, you know what? I really don't need a lecture on how I can and can't. You know what? Just go and have a coffee, please. <laughs> you know, hey, I've arrested and charged more killers than you've had on dinner, sweetheart. You know, you got an attitude problem, Roisin. Yeah? You should show a little bit more respect. I know we cross swords, but, you know, you, you should really start to listen to someone who's had a hell of a lot more experience than you. Yeah. Your job is to do exactly that, not bring up personal issues. Hey, this is not personal. I've had my doubts about this since day one. Oh, uh, yeah? Mm. So if you've known about it since day one, why have you done sort all about it? Now is not the time. No. But just because they don't turn out to be happy families, you focus on the sun. Yeah, you don't know the half of it, but yeah, you point the finger of blame at me. Oh, you know, Mike, this is just your paranoia. I'm just not completely satisfied. You don't have kids. You don't know what they're like. They fight between themselves. It means nothing. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you saying the fighting between your kids means nothing? I'm sorry. Did your son Richard not just go and maim and kill swans? Don't you go there. You don't know what the fuck you're talking oh, about. Oh, really? And you do. You didn't Come even on. know your kids are starving school. You know what? No, Come. I am not going to go there. <laughs> just, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> yeah, so you attacked me and my family, and okay. it's all my fault. All I am trying to do is work out why James Harrogate was lying about leaving his grandmother's house. That's it. I am in no way trying to attach this to your situation. Oh, yeah, well, I'll tell you. How interested you are in my situation, as you call it. You don't give a shit about it. Here, have my flat. You might need the extra space. Well, I did need it, but you didn't mean it. And I've never needed backup more in my entire fucking life. You certainly find out who your friends are. Oh, all you had to do was ask, Mike. I did! But you were too fucking busy watching CCTV footage. But don't worry, Roisin, because it doesn't matter. I don't need it anymore. But I tell you this, you better start showing some respect, sweetheart, because your fucking card is marked. Get him. My card is marked. Piss fucking Scott! 
give him that coffee before I fuck it on his head! Richard's got to be locked up. I've just come from the secure adolescent unit they've taken him to. It's like a Victorian nut house. Therapist says he needs treatment. Hm. That's the best place for him, away from me, away from his ma. Makes you feel really good. Really bloody wasted. I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah. So am I such. I had nowhere else to go when I came here. I just needed, you know, talk it over. <laughs> I obviously came to the wrong place. Didn't I? Reconstructions such as this simply tell us what might have happened, not what did. They demonstrate the trajectory a falling body can follow, the different types of impact that can occur, and the sort of injuries that can be produced. I take it that demonstrations like the ones you conducted cannot help with the central question of did she fall or was she pushed? They can show us what happens after a fall begins, but they don't help as to what caused the fall. My lady, may Dr. Kinton demonstrate from the diagram? Well, the marks to the throat here and here would suggest that at some stage there was a struggle with the deceased being grabbed by the throat. Whether that struggle led to either fall, I cannot say. But this is not a strangulation case. No. The cause of death was the head and neck injuries. Are you saying that is characteristic of a stair fall, the marks to her throat, her arms? Well, they would suggest to me two people standing opposite facing each other, one holding the other. Doesn't necessarily suggest any great force, but certainly a deliberate gripping or clutching action. Dr. Kinton, can you help at all as to the sequence of events generally? You say a deliberate gripping or clutching action. We did not once manage to get the dummy down to the bottom of the first flight unless we propelled it. Thank you, Dr. Kinton. Dr. Kinton, the arm marks we've seen, could they have been caused by someone trying to take hold to prevent the fall? Yes. They could equally have occurred when Emily was in the nightclub earlier that night, could they not? That also is possible. So you can point to nothing to prove that the fall down to the cellar was caused by another person intentionally pushing her? No. Thank you, Dr. Kinton. I found her in the hallway lying on the floor in a heap. So what did you do? I went to try and comfort her. I think I started saying something like, are you okay? Can you stand up? That sort of thing. What did you think had happened to her? Well, at that stage, I thought she'd fallen down the stairs, but I didn't really have time to think. She suddenly looked at me and she was saying like, Stay away from me! And she was being attacked or something and she was trying to get away. I didn't really, I didn't really know what to do. She. She sort of got up and she was backing away from me and she was shouting. Stay away from me! I mean, I kept saying it was, it was me. It's me, it's my Stay team. away from me! But it didn't seem to make any difference. I mean, she looked really scared, like something, I don't know, terrible had happened to her and she didn't want anyone near her. She just kept backing away from me. At this point, I, th I thought she was, um, Hysterical, so I went to, well, I went to grab her arms, <laughs> so I could try and calm her down. Do you recall what position she was in when you grabbed her by the arms, Michael? What position was Emily in when you grabbed her by the arms?
facing me. She was facing me. Because I was moving forward and she was pulling away and then she just suddenly went through the door and down a cellar steps. Her head was at a really funny angle. Her eyes were open and it was horrible. I'd done it. What do you mean you'd done it? I mean it was my fault. Because I kept saying to her that it was me. It was Mike. She didn't seem to recognize me. Did you at any stage that you can remember touch the cellar door? Hello? Yes. When I first went into the house, I went into the kitchen. I wasn't familiar with the layout and it was dark. I opened the wrong door. Emily? That was the cellar door. I opened it. It was my fault. The whole thing was my fault. <laughs> When you realized she was dead, what did you do? What could I do? She was dead. I thought I caused it, but I never, I never. I just, I panicked. Sorry, I panicked. I ran out, I went. The clothes that were found hidden in the park that we've heard about, were those your clothes? They had, they had blood all over them. It was, it was all Emily's blood. <laughs> and I, um, I fell over, I think. I just wanted to get rid of him, so that's what I did. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Honestly, you have to believe me, I didn't mean it. I think we'll have a short break. Continue in 20 minutes when we sit again. Mr. Nesbitt? All rise. In John Harrogate's statement, he said that when they went to the grandmother's for dinner, they closed the garage door. Yeah, so Emily opened it. Why go in that way if you've got a key? How's he doing? Good. On the wagon. Well, let's hope he stays on it. He's a nasty drunk. He's had a lot thrown at him, you know. It's not easy being a dad. Members of the jury, the evidence that you have listened to so carefully proves, does it not, that Michael Summerby knows full well precisely how Emily met her death. Because he was there. He was there until he fled once he saw what he had done. He did exactly what a guilty man would do, tried to cover his tracks and dispose of those incriminating clothes. Then, when caught, he lied, changing his story to fit each new piece of evidence as it came to light. He has lied to you, ladies and gentlemen, again and again. It's rubbish! It's rubbish that you tell him I didn't kill Emily! Mr. Summerby, no, please no, be I quiet. Didn't do it. I Why won't you down. listen to me, you fucking bastards? Duck hey, officer, take, take him down. Someone else is there, okay? Get off me. Get, what are you doing? Please be, what are you doing to me? Hold me! I'm telling you the truth! Honestly, I didn't do it, I'm innocent! It wasn't you, Jack! Take me back up! Calm down! Hold me! No! No! Listen. You don't understand! Jack, listen to me! James! What are you doing? What on earth do you think you're doing? Terrible for Yes, of course I do. It's dreadful for all of us. He looked at me. He kept looking at me. He knows. He knows. Now, James, James, you listen to me. You listen. What are you doing? I know what you told me. Yes, you were. About seeing 
Emily Fall. I know that, but that was an accident. I understand why you ran away. James. James. You were scared of him. It's understandable. After so much. You put out for him, now I'm Get out of me! Get out of me! James! Stop it! James, James, darling. James, you must not tell anyone. I won't. I won't. Not ever. It'll be, it'll be our secret. You can't see him. Then you look back. You look straight back at him. Because he killed Emily. He killed her. He threw her down the cellar stairs. Not you. Not you. Michael Summerby is not going to get away with this, and you say nothing. Emily? James. Emily? Members of the jury, I have had a message passed to the defendant that he need not come back into court during the speeches if he doesn't wish to. For your part, you will not hold any of that against him, or the defense at all. It would be quite wrong and unfair if you did. It very much looks as if the Crown are right about an initial attack at the top of the stairs. But who was it that attacked her, and why? Was it someone who had access to the house? Perhaps someone of similar appearance to Michael, someone who had some family reason to resent her or wish her ill. That attack, the cries, and the sound of Emily falling down to the ground floor were all heard by Michael Summerby in the garden, and that's why he ran into the house. The garage doors were wide open, so he could hear her clearly. Once inside in a house he is unfamiliar with, he opened what turned out to be the cellar door. He then went, as he has informed you members of the jury, into the hallway to find his friend in a crumpled heap. Don't! Don't me! Don't do it! It's all right, it's me, it's me! Did she think she was still in the presence of her attacker? and back away from him, just as he has told you. And was it that backing away that caused her to go cascading down those second, much steeper stone stairs through the open cellar door? And what did he do? Really, just what any of us would do. Ran down the stairs after her, nearly fell over himself, and discovered her obviously dead, her neck grotesquely broken by the fall. And does that not explain the anguished fury we see in him when he claims he did not harm her? He did not hurt her in any way. I'm sorry for sounding off. It's just that I remembered something. The front door slamming. And I kept looking over at him. He wouldn't even look at me. Michael, we have to go back into court. Yeah. I didn't do it. Just so you know. Come on. Let's go. Oh. My dad wrote to me. That's good, Michael. That's good.
Will the defendant please stand? Will the foreman please stand? Mr. Foreman, please answer my next question, yes or no. Have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed? Yes, we have. Members of the jury, do you find the defendant, Michael Summerby, guilty or not guilty of murder? Guilty. The children and I are very pleased with the result. We can now get on with our lives. Tragically, without our beloved Emily. Deirdre, now come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good to see you, Mike. Bye. Uh, What's your name? Alan Summer. You blame yourself? Uh, no, I know. I blame his father. He was never there. Before. On left back, Mike. No, I'm going the opposite way, thanks. Mike. I'm sorry. Those things that I said, I, I didn't mean to have a go at you. I know. Maybe some of the things you said were true. <laughs> what keeps coming back are memories. The day you wanted to play cricket. And I did another time. I remember him standing at his bedroom window. Well, a little cricket bat in his hand. Yeah. Take you home, yeah. 